Hello guys and welcome to a new We Talk You the video. Today we're here with the brand new Zhiyun Smooth 4, which is not the new Smooth 3, it's actually an upgrade from the Smooth Q and you know, we love gimbals, we love testing them, so we're gonna review it, see if it is a good gimbal and take a look. Nothing else to say, let's go inside. Hello guys and welcome, this is Alex Asmacher and you know that in the past months we've been reviewing quite a few gimbals. We had the DJI S Mobile 2, comparing it to the One, we also had the Smooth Q, we had the Smooth Mobile and we've done a series of videos. Now this is the new Smooth 4 and you know with our experience now we can test it. We've seen some official videos from Zhiyun but we want to know if the things that they are saying are actually true. Nothing else to say, let's take a look. So guys, back in the studio, just a short video about how we do the unboxing. Oh, that smell. Yes, 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 yes. So, oh, foam case. This reminds me of the Phantom case. Oh, nice. Easy setup. The gimbal. The base, I believe. Yeah. And a micro USB. Oh, USB C type. And that's pretty much everything that's inside the box. Well, guys, let's start first of all, of course, talking about the price. The Smooth 4 right now is at $139. Uh, you know, the Smooth Mobile was a little bit above around 150 and the Osmo Mobile 2 started at 129 and the Smooth Q went down to under 100 bucks. So it's somewhere there in between um, and as a new product the price is pretty good. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, the build quality and even though it is made out of plastic it seems uh, pretty uh, solid. It is, it is a good um, quality and I can trust this. I mean if I drop this I haven't dropped it yet, but if I do, I believe it's gonna hold the uh, impact. And when talking about a little bit about the knobs and the build quality and everything, one of the things that surprised me actually a lot and I really loved, I first thought that it was like magnetic, because you can, I don't know if you can hear it, there is a final position to put the gimbal like this so that actually when you're holding it and not filming it doesn't you know move around like crazy like on the Osmo Mobile or the Smooth Q that they just go you know insane and you can puff puff hit them against anything. Um, it is actually a very simple uh, system of a plastic button so that you can clack put it inside. Uh, overall the knobs are pretty normal knobs like we're used to. Remember the Smooth Mobile didn't have but this one still has and they are, I mean, they're okay. You can play a little bit around with them. And of course, let's put the phone inside right now, like very easily. You know, you have one of these systems here to just pull this parts and put the phone inside. And um, of course, first of all, you have to adjust um, the stability. So for this purpose, one of the nice extras that comes inside the box is this base like small tripod that you just can attach with a 3.5 millimeter down here. Um, very easily. And you can pretty much put it on any surface. So now um, all we have to do is use the knob on the back and just make it to the right position. And as soon as we got it stabilized, we can turn it on just by holding the power button and you'll see that it gets to the final position. But let's make a stop here. And we know that many of you come here for the footage. So this is the Samsung S9, the Smooth 4. Let's see what cinematic capabilities both together have. Now let's take a look.
what happens when you turn on the Smooth 4? Well, actually, the first thing noticeable here and that we have not seen yet like this on other gimbals, you see this PF chibo? This means pan follow. This means when the button is up here at PF and you take the Smooth 4, it will pan and follow the whatever you're doing, but it won't go up or down, okay? So it just can go to both the sides. This is very important because once you go down here to the L, Chivo, it's the lock mode. And once it is at the lock mode, it won't go up, down, left or right. So this is pretty good if you're, you know, running behind something that doesn't move too much. Just without holding any trigger or anything, it will be locked. And now one of my favorite parts here. By the way, we'll talk about the app in a second and how to connect the device and anything. We'll talk about that in the studio. Let's talk about the trigger. You know how crazy I am about the triggers, how much I love them. And some of the newest gimbals didn't have any triggers. So it, they made all the buttons more complicated and you know, a trigger is easy, it is good placed. It's not one trigger, it's two triggers. And so if you pull the trigger at the bottom, it will center the phone again to the initial position. Not only this, but when you're filming and you hold it, the nice thing is that it will go up, down, left and right, as you can see here. So by holding the trigger, you can go up and down and left and right. Now the next thing here is the trigger, but the upper part. It's like a very fast mode. So if you hold the upper trigger, it will go very fast to whatever you're doing, like up, down, right, left. You know, the velocity, we're not really sure that we're gonna use it ever, but at least it's a function that will give us something different and new we have not been testing yet. Look at the speed, look at the speed, go all the way fast. And one of the nice features, of course, that is a must today also on the gimbals is the portrait mode. You can do like this for stories or anything you want to film vertically. Tough test, guys. Stairs. We're gonna run upstairs full speed. I'm gonna chase Chivo with the gimbal, see if it's a good gimbal or not. Oh, Chivo, what are you doing here? The Smooth 4 is smooth, Chivo. What do you think about that? Well guys, for this part, talking about the app we wanted to get here inside the studio, more calm and chill environment, and we want to talk a little bit about the app again. So the first thing, of course, is connecting it via Bluetooth. Once your Bluetooth is on, you have to go to connect device and with, um, all the problems that all the gimbals have always... Oh, it was... Okay, it just connected automatically. And I just wanted to highlight a couple of things inside the app. The app is very simple. It's working until now good. So um, overall, uh, you have a couple of symbols, icons up there. If it's connected via Bluetooth, um, the port photo mode, the flash, the timer, and if you want to have it in HDR or not the pictures. Uh, the tracking button, something that you'll probably be using is this little circle down there. And um, overall, that's pretty much it inside the app and visually. Fun thing here is that we do not have any more a um, joystick here. The Smooth 4 comes with a wheel, which you can move a little bit around and a button in the middle to select the menus that you're going. Of course, if you go and press the menu button, you'll enter inside the menu and you have a few things that we talked before, the icons, HDR, timer and so on, the white balance, the resolution. If you want to navigate through the menu, you just have to use the wheel, select and you'll go here um, into the different modes. Of course, the modes, the recording modes depend on your phone. This is the Samsung S9 and it has 4K at 60. Maybe your phone has it, maybe it doesn't. So for going back into the menu, just press the menu button and you can go here into manual mode, which will put all the settings into the manual, manual mode, the white balance, the shutter speed. Now you can play with all of them and you can of course go back into auto or just turn off the manual. Finally, this 
we'll be testing in a second is the mode walking or motion. We'll see if there is a difference in any or both. And the settings, which are interesting here, the video quality, um, you just probably want it on excellent. And there are a series of different functions that you can be playing a little bit around with. The most important image stabilization, you probably want this to have it on. Uh, the grid depends on your camera mode. It has different modes, pro or original. Zhiyun says that you should keep it on the pro always. Now let's talk a little bit about the buttons. Um, what we do like here is, as you've seen, the app is really simple. And that's one of the things we liked the most on DJI Osmo Mobile, for example. And the Zhiyun app, until now, it was kind of complicated. But now it is simple and good. And the buttons are also working good. And it's nice to use them. As I told you, the wheel to change some settings. Uh, the menu button, the display button, just if you press push the button, all the information down here will disappear or appear. So whatever you want. And now we come to the interesting things here. If you press, of course, this button, as you could hear, you will take a photo. And on this button, you'll start recording. No big deal. Probably one of the biggest improvements or different things here that makes this gimbal unique is this wheel right here. On this wheel, I'll show you if you can, Chivo, just uh, film the screen here. Um, you can use the zoom. Really simple. It is nice and it doesn't really have a big latency. And the difference now comes if you press this button here, if you push this one, you'll see that it turns blue and it's activated. And it says that it changes so that you can actually manually adjust the focus of something. So if we go, for example, into that V, um, we zoom in and we want to pull the focus manually, you can see that we can adjust it to leave it perfectly. And this is um, something definitely new to play around with. And we're really excited in the following weeks to be using this and see if it is capable of creating something new, something different uh, with this focus wheel. Well, guys, we also wanted to talk a little bit about the different modes that this app gives us on the Zunyun app, actually. And if you go here to the camera, you'll see that you have a couple of different modes. The default, of course, the 180 pano, the 3x3 three three pano, slow-mo, which is okay, time-lapse that we already know, the motion time-lapse, and finally, the vertigo. And this is pretty much all that the app has to offer, which is clear, simple, consist, and good. Well, guys, as a conclusion, um, I wanted to highlight a few things. Um, we've been now two, three hours with the Smooth 4, and overall, I'm really happy with the experience. I thought that it would be a little bit in the line of the Smooth Q. There were a few things I didn't like, but I have liked it. It is pretty smooth, as the name says, and I still think that I have to learn how to use it because it does not have a joystick. It does have a wheel here, Chivo, but it does not have a joystick. And maybe I'm about to die now. <laughs> as you can see right here, it does not have a joystick, and for some shots, you just have to learn how to use it, the triggers, um, you know, the different buttons, and a few things I didn't like. Let's talk about them. First of all, at some point, I saw that the gimbal was appearing in my camera, in my footage. So I don't know if it's because of my S9 Samsung or I don't know, but it was appearing. So be careful with that. Second of all, we changed to manual. But if you change to manual, it will still be automatic. You have to go into the settings and then adjust them manually. I want to highlight also here that we had some problems with the app. I don't know if it was my phone. It is new and, you know, um, it's, a, it's an Android phone. With the iPhone, we did never have a problem with the Zion app, but on the Samsung, I may have some problems. And actually, I wanted to show you how to track with this, but we weren't able to track. And I don't know if there's something missing, an update of firmware or anything, but I just wasn't able to track. Now, I would have showed you. Summing up a little bit, if I would buy or I wouldn't buy this gimbal, well, of course, it depends. If you already have a smooth queue, this is an improvement. Okay, it's a better gimbal. It's up to you if you want to spend 139 bucks on a new gimbal or not. If you don't have a gimbal, it's definitely a gimbal to play. I mean, it is smooth. Overall, the experience was good apart from the few 
mistakes that I told you, it is a better gimbal than what we were used on this smooth Q line inside Siyun. I really liked it a lot. I'm surprised actually. And the two triggers are a must for me. Also this with the focus and zoom thing, we're gonna play with this for sure in the future. And you know, I was missing the joystick, but overall I really recommend this gimbal as one of the big players in the game. So it's gonna be fighting against the Osmo Mobile 2, the Smooth Mobile, and you know, it's gonna be a nice fight. By the way, if you guys want us to do some comparison or you want us to answer any more questions on this new gimbal, just feel free to let them in the comments your questions and we'll be answering them. And you guys know that most gimbals will give you kind of the same output, the same video footage, and it doesn't really matter if it's big or smaller, uh, less heavy, it will give you the same output. It's a stabilizer and this one here, the Smooth 4, is a good player. It will be in the same league as the others. So it's up to you if you want to spend 10, 20 bucks more, less, have a joystick, have a trigger. So recommended is to do a list, do whatever you need on a gimbal and purchase the one you like the most. This one is a good shot. So it's the fifth time I'm trying to say goodbye on this video. It was people behind me screaming, background music as you can hear. Well guys, nothing really else to say. Um, this is pretty much the review of the Smooth 4. Um, I don't know if you've seen along the video this little guy here, our little new friend. We just named it Little Chiwi from Chewbacca. Leave a like for this man here. He will be in most of our videos outdoors and nothing really else to say. Always remember to keep calm and talk to you, Evie.